going on, everybody? So, Monster. Midwest Monster. I went to it yesterday. Three hour drive there, three and a half hour back because of stupid traffic and accidents. 177 miles, one way. Man, craziness. Um, overall, talked to a lot of people I knew that were set up, and even some people I didn't know set up because they were just older and just wanted to chit chat. I, I, it really from the first one to this one here, it just didn't have the same pop as it did the first one to me. Maybe because the first one I just, you know, didn't know what to expect and put it on, you know, a lower level type deal for being first time in the area. And this one here, I was kind of maybe expecting just a little bit of a decrease because of being short notice. Uh, just wasn't a lot at the show that really, really excited me to buy. I wanted to do like three videos into one type deal out of one event. And I couldn't do it. I wanted to do like a $500,000 raw card thing and so we'd go through the whole process, see what happens. That died because there wasn't a whole lot and I didn't want to just buy to buy. It just didn't make sense to me. A lot of dealers very overpriced. They're in for it big or they bought in boxes. That their boxes cost too much money. They didn't want to budge. Even hearing, you know, guys like doing the 15, well, you'd only get 15% of that price there on eBay. I'll give you that. Guys wouldn't take it. It was amazing. There were a lot of, I'd probably say about 60% of the people there were like that. And that's the general consensus from a lot of older dealers there. A lot of people asked me, you know, hey, you were at the first one. How was it? I said, man, I came here Friday and there was a line all the way wrapped around 15 minutes before this time I go to the side extra overflow park and, man, there was nobody there. I pulled right up front. There was like six cars in the parking lot. Walked up here. I, there was only six people actually in front of me, too. Um, it got a little busier as time went on. They they were all hoping Saturday was going to be better up there. So hopefully Saturday was better for everybody up in there. A lot of dealers weren't making money. Uh, there were some guys that were just stretching and you come across their tips. Man, I give you a deal right now. 30% off any of these cards right here. Stuff like that. But it was stuff I couldn't move. It made no sense to buy. And I wasn't just going to rush in to buy to buy. Uh, let me think here. I actually taped this now twice. Because I left something out and I made sure I put it in this time. Yeah, I mean, I, I thought about setting up at these. And the more and more after talking to people, like $200 for a table... Cheapest that somebody got a room for was like 170 after all the taxes and all the stuff. And then, you know, got to figure that's two nights I'd need one. Then you throw in food and gas onto it. It's like roughly 800 bucks. And I just don't know if I want to put $800, you know, going and starting off at a show. Because that's a lot of dollar and 50 cent cards you got to sell. Because otherwise you're taking profit out of your cases. And I kind of like the smaller shows because I can rely on my dollar and 50 cent boxes to cover that price plus gas. And I don't know. Pro I don't know if I'll do it or not. It's set up now. Just it's it's a little bit of a thing I'm just been debating on. But not saying I, it's not a bad show to set up at. I mean, first of all, I knew a lot of people made some uh, crazy money up there. This time, like I said, a lot of dealers that last two or three hours on Friday were stretching to make money. Uh. A lot of people that were set up the first show were not there. This one, it could have been because of the summit. They didn't want to do it. There was also a couple other things going on, too, I heard. Nope, didn't do trade night, even though I got asked a million times. Uh, That's pretty much it, really, with the show. I mean, I talked to a couple of the people that own shops up there, and they still haven't been able to get Fanatics accounts to get um product like kind of like allocated to them. They have to fight just like everybody else to get product uh, off their website, and they've all scored zero. I think that's pretty much, I'd say, for the interesting part of it all out there. Uh, you guys seen the clip with the other videos on there, like the Lucas in the beginning, the autos. Guy wasn't budging. He said, I know I'm overpriced, but I'm not budging on him. He's in it too big. I mean, he came right out there and said it. Um, he needs to get that kind of money out of it. Luca's going to do all kind of crazy stuff and all that. I think people are just in that denial stage that the stuff's still going to drop, guys. It's still going to go down. A lot of us think it's going to take it till the Fanatics uh, starts producing product a few months before we really figure out where the value is going to lie in the hobby itself. 
So if you're gonna take a loss, you gotta take a loss. Hopefully you made a lot of profit, you know, ahead of time. And that was the thing I was talking about with a lot of people. I mean, during COVID, I made a good chunk of money, but I just have not spent any of it at all. You know? It's just to the point that I'm just like very, very selective in what I do. And just like what I wanted to do going for for videos, I couldn't do it because there was nothing there. I was hoping to find, you know, five cards somewhere between $100, $200 each I can get. And we do a grading thing, grade them, see the results, send them to DC in an order. We'll watch, see what they sell out, how much profit was to be made on it, stuff like that. But just wasn't there. All right, I'll show you guys what I picked up. So. We have to reset these. My bad. Picked another OJ Simpson rookie up. So these, both of them are going to go to SGC. Probably what I'm going to do is whatever one gets the higher grade, we'll use partly in one of the giveaways for uh, the pick them. Probably mid-tour, mid-season. I pretty much got that one locked up. I was looking for a Bradshaw rookie to grade, but I found one and the guy was stupid high on it. And it was not going to grade well. So a guy I know that goes to Newberg show is going to bring me an SGC SGC three. He believes he has a Bradshaw to the next show, and so I'll probably pick that up and we'll use that part in the giveaway too. I was trying to find a nice Walter Payton raw or graded, but I mean the ones they had I saw were sevens and eights, and they were just ridiculous in price compared to what they're selling for. All right, a uh, guy had hockey. There was a couple hockey dealers up there. Now, this guy was an older gentleman. I went through all his stuff. He had nice raw young guns. I just don't know why I didn't pull the trigger. Maybe because I'm young gunned out right now. But this is Zegris. This is all the new artifacts. Figured what the heck. Grab him. A lot of people have been talking good about him. I guess he's going to be the face of the rookie class or something. I have no idea. I haven't really been following it. So I figured what the heck. $18 special. We'll throw him in. Another guy I picked these three up in another card. I guess you can say it's the third of the prospects uh Dominguez's. Got these, I think, for oh three dollars each or something like that when you average what I paid for the lot out. It was uh pretty good overall. These raw are like twelve to fifteen dollars a pop. PSA tens are between fifty and sixty, so I was like, okay, if I mail if these look like they're gradable, I could send at least if one gets a 10, I'm pretty much going to be even on to it. I'm not going to probably grade all three. Don't get me wrong if they're jacked up. But if one grades a 10, I'm good. But if I send all three and they all 10, you know, making 20 some dollars after eBay fees a pop and stuff like that, $60 profit, hey, I'm good. Small gains. As long as it's all profit. This was also thrown in the deal. It was a Kawhi Leonard uh, SP Authentic rookie. I didn't look it over really. It ju I just did a real quick glance at it. It was cheap. So uh, once I look it over, it's no good. Probably go DC if that's that way. Next one was deal with a trade where I got trade and cash onto that. Remember that Sidney Crosby 75 uh, Black Diamond Gemography that I picked up, raw, graded it. Well, then I ended up getting another one, graded it, got a nine. So I put that one out. So did trade. Pick the Tavares uh, future watch out. This came back 9-9. Nine, nine. The edges got an 8-5. I couldn't figure out really why the edges were an 8-5. I'm going to have to look it over good. But because of the year and the way they had the ink on the autographs, that's why it's a 9. I think this could go transfer over and be a PSA 9. And so he left me the wiggle room to do this at a bulk rate of like 20 bucks, actually, you know, off type deal in a trade. The transfer it over plus i got the cash too which paid for a lot of this guys i, I might have spent 200 cash total that's after taking gas food and all that stuff in consideration with what i spent for the show so pretty cool there last two um joey already seen these believe it or not i actually have this card i didn't know that i don't know when i got it um that's now a double but it's a Jordan in a Wizards uniform. I've been trying to pull, get more of his stuff. Uh, just because it's not a whole lot out there. Just like a Wizards auto. Really crazy in price too on those. But pick this up. Along with one of these. I have not seen one since 2008. I had to go back and look at my records. That's one of the reasons why I actually uh, redid the video too. But these are the hand numbered ones that came out of... Um, 
upper deck that year, uh, 2,500. This has a little bit of bottom chipping there onto it, but I mean, these are, uh, from what I understand, everybody's like even more super huge Nolan Ryan me. They think only like 12 to 1,300 of these have been pulled. And it might even be a lower number because you don't see these popping out right everywhere. 2,500 of this car, you should see a lot more out there. And you may see one, two a month float on eBay, and one might be a buy and out some stupid end price onto it that's been on there forever. I can tell you, I've looked, oh, I don't know what it was, like 15, 16 years for these cards. And it was funny because I went to back to back shows and picked these up originally, two of them. And then uh, this is the next one I saw to show since 2008. Kind of crazy, I'll tell you that. These are very rare to find. So grabbed it when I can. Um, these here, again, were not like you see today with holograms and all that stuff, saying it's autographed and all that. You got to be careful on these. What I've learned is, because I have pictures, I look at the numbering on these because it's very, very distinct uh, onto it for the person that did them and stuff. But pretty cool to find that to show. Uh, really happy with that there. So not too bad on pickups, guys. Uh, sorry I couldn't get, you know, do the three videos into one that I wanted to do on this. It was just, just not there. Nothing really excited me to, you know, go bye, bye, bye. Uh, I'll probably get a video out showing some stuff going out to SGC. Well, actually, you guys already know. Those two OJ cards are going to SGC. I don't have to do a video on it. We'll see what they come back as. I'll do a video on that. It'll be a quick turnaround. But, yeah, I'm going to get a smaller bulk order out of my stuff. And Joey's here for Tuesday. Got a couple other videos coming out, hobby news, uh, some stuff that I found that uh, you guys might not have known about. But other than that, guys, take care. Have a good one. I'll catch you all next video.